Hello, my name is Dr. Lester Hartman. I'm Westwood Mansfield Pediatrics. This topic, vaping, is one that's very interesting for parents to learn and understand better. First of all, vaping is now the new morphing of big tobacco to make it look like tobacco is bad but vaping is fine because it's only water vapor or nicotine. That's all pretty much a lie. It is not safe and it is not healthier. It has not been proven to be a cessation device. It's more a initiation device to addict our youth. Remember, everybody who smokes or vapes who can't stop is a nicotine addict. Do we want our kids to be the lab rats for big vaping like our family and friends were for big tobacco? Let us not repeat history and delay intervening with regulations. As many of you may know, I've worked with public health to raise the minimum legal sales age of tobacco and vaping products to 21. Because the addiction centers in the brain are vulnerable to being rewired by nicotine between the ages of 14 and 25 much less so after 21. So social distancing is key. You get the distributor out of the high school by not allowing an 18, 19 year olds to purchase and that reduces the use in the high school. This is well known when Needham did this and had a threefold reduction in tobacco use in the high school as compared to Wellesley. But the key is it's being marketed to our children. Promoting nicotine addiction is all about youth, not about people getting off tobacco because no big tobacco industry wants to go out of business. They are rising in vaping, like Blue, which is part of Altrea, what used to be Philip Morris. E-cigarettes are a hoax. They are meant to addict our youth. Period. 90% of people who smoke and probably vape who are lifetime smokers began before the age of 18, 95% before the age of 21. Hence, the longer we wait, the less likely they will become addicted. Underage use of flavored e-cigarettes are used at three to four fold the rate in kids and teens than they are in adults. Keep this in mind, 40% of people who vape end up smoking as well. Given the 7,700 flavors that are things such as cotton candy, Sour Patch Kids, things like that, it is something that is fully intended to attract youth, not the 30, 40, 50 year old to get off tobacco. What is in this stuff? Now remember, kids will fight you and say, it is only water vapor. This is not just water vapor. You're inhaling vegetable oil. It is unclear what that will do to your lungs. If you see somebody who vapes, feel the surface where the vaping lands on. It's very oily and picture that in your lungs. There's propylene glycol, which is car radiator fluid that is in e-nicotine juice that gets poured in tanks or the blue e-cigarettes as well. This is used as a suspension for the flavorants. The FDA approved propylene glycol to eat in things. There's a huge difference between eating and inhaling. Remember this, you can eat a steak, but you can't inhale it because it will kill you. Aldehydes are used to flavor, and those are known carcinogen. Acrolene, which is known to have caused what's called popcorn lung in a Texas microwave popcorn plant where people injected gases into the microwave popcorn bags, destroyed lungs about one out of every 10 persons that were on the floor being exposed to this, and they either died or had to have lung transplants. And your kids are being exposed to low doses, not high doses like that. And we have no earthly idea what that's going to do to the lungs in the long term. Cadmium and nickel are in the heating coils on e-cigarettes, and those are inhaled in micro microscopic amounts. But over years, that accumulates in the lungs, and both of those are known carcinogens to the lungs. And remember, nicotine is a gateway drug for cocaine. It's not clean. It's not like caffeine. It raises blood pressure, raises heart rate, and we know those things aren't good for your cardiovascular system. Nicotine is also thought to increase the risk of sudden infant death syndrome. And I've had personal experience. My nephew, who diffuses bombs for a living in the Air Force, started smoking when he got into the Air Force, and he had a son die of sudden infant death syndrome at two months of age. How do the youth obtain these things? The key is the internet. 
Be very careful giving gift cards to kids, like Visa gift cards, because they will go on the internet where they can get vaping products. You should go online and look at what a vape pen looks like, what a tank device looks like, and a newer one called Juul, J-U-U-L, which will show you what that one looks like. It's very small and they can hide it from you quite easily. So, if you want to learn more, there are sites on the screen right now. One is www.tobaccofreekids, just put in Tobacco Free Kids. Look up e-juice, you'll find all sorts of information. If you go to the American Academy of Pediatrics and put in also the Richmond Center, you'll find ed everything you need to know about e-cigarettes. And then also the trusted site of the Center for Disease Control, cdc.gov. I hope parents will realize that vaping is not safe and it's, it's not um, something kids should be doing because it, it's, it's an addictive device. We need to make it 21. And we also, the FDA, we hope through the American Academy of Pediatrics, will make a final ban on flavored nicotines and tobaccos, hopefully soon. Thank you. This is Dr. Lester Hartman from Westwood Mansfield Pediatrics saying have a nice day.